last day of the trip in the park we are ending things out with happens to be my favorite of all the ones I visit on this trip. Six Flags over Georgia. The main reason I'm here is for this guy, Goliath. If you saw my vlog from Six Flags over Georgia last year, you may recall that this thing was closed the entire day, so I never got to ride it. Since I've last ridden it in 2021, a lot of people are saying this is the best B&M Hyper now. I really don't remember it too well, so I need to get on it a couple more times and see how good it actually is. Plus, I've ridden, I think, every B&M Hyper in the US since my last time on this, which is a lot. I'm excited to get on this and also get on Twisted Cyclone, see how it compares to some of the other RMCs I've ridden. Tried their Batman clone again, see how good it is compared to the other ones I rode. And I'm excited to get on their Justice League again. So let's have a great day here at Six Flags over Georgia and finish off the trip strong. I was gonna rope drop Justice League, which I still am gonna do that, but Georgia Scorcher opened early today. So I'm gonna make this my first ride of the day because I know this will build up a line. So let's do this before the park actually opens because since this and Twisted Cyclone are before the staging area, these two rides open early. So that's why I'm gonna get a ride on Georgia Scorcher first and I'll get back to Twisted Cyclone later. So let's start off with Georgia Scorcher and put my feet to the fire. <laughs> Not bad. I will say that was even better than my already awesome ride last year. I actually got some airtime on it this time, which I don't remember ever getting on this ride. So that was a really nice surprise and definitely the best stand-up coaster I've ridden on this trip. Yes, I do prefer George Scorcher to Pipeline at SeaWorld Orlando. Don't fight me for that, please. George Scorcher didn't really have any discomfort besides like the occasional positives on the valleys. But other than that, I would say it was more than tolerable. If my down low area was touching the bicycle seat, I could see how that could get ugly really fast because I had that issue with Pipeline and it sucked. I did actually see Goliath run while in line for George Scorcher. So I know it should be opening today. Once 11 o'clock comes around, straight to Justice League, and then we'll start knocking out some of the rides in the back of the park, like Superman, Grand American Scream Machine, and Blue Hawk. Third Justice League this year, and they're within the past month. Let's see how we do. on Justice League. Already gotten close to 600,000 and I'm trying to see if I can break 700,000 today. So my high as of right now is 628,000. Just got 582,000. So I don't know. I think I should be able to get a new best today. But 700,000? I don't know. I'm going to do Superman now since they're only running one train on one side. And I figured that line will get long if I don't do it fast. So I'm going to do this, then do Justice League a few more times, then go ride Great American Scream Machine and Blue Hawk and work my way towards the front of the park. <laughs>
Superman's always a good time. Sure, it may not be as good as Manta, which I wrote a couple days ago in Super World Orlando, but I think it holds its own. Now, let's see if we can get 600,000 to regress towards 700,000. Actually, would you look at that? Red Flash for car four. That was the one I just missed. It's waiting for me, so let's go. Man, I choked so hard on that fourth screen. I completely missed all the motorcycle henchmen I was trying to shoot at. That completely derailed the 600,000 mark. Definitely screwed up there, but other than that, I feel like I did really well on the rest of the ride. In order for me to get a possible 700,000 run, or even a new personal best before 700,000, I need to do a really good job on the first screen, kill it in the canisters, get four sets of panels on the second screen, which I have done here before, so it is doable, deactivate both cranes on the third screen, shoot as many of those light bots in the center as possible, and then not miss any motorcycle henchmen in the fourth screen. So I got a lot of work to do, I feel like, if I want to get that new best. So let's try it again, because life's still short. Might as well take advantage of it. And the single rider line is there, but it's not in use for right now, for whatever reason. So might as well get my rides on this thing now while the line is short. If I can get car one or car four, I'm good, because I had the red blast from both of those, and those are the ones I think I did the best with.
American Scream Machine and then Blue Hawk. Scream Machine, I had heard from some people that it was running rough this year. I didn't feel that way. I thought it was just as smooth as last year. Now, I don't know the people who said it was rough did not ride it in the front, which that's probably the case because I rode in the front of it just fine. And then I did Blue Hawk, which was definitely rougher than my ride last year. I actually hit my elbow on the side of the train a couple times because the jolts were a lot worse this year. I wouldn't say it was a bad ride, but definitely my least favorite of the coasters I've been on today. So that is what it is. My brother wants me to show him how to score high on Justice League. So I'm going to show him how to do that. And then I'll start making my way up towards Goliath and Twisted Cyclone. I ended up doing a couple more rides on Justice League while I was over there because the line was still really short, which kind of surprises me. I'm heading towards the front of the park where I'm going to go get on Goliath and Twisted Cyclone. On the way over there, I'm going to ride Monster Mansion. I was going to ride it last year. When I passed by it, it wasn't open. So I'm going to try that right now and see just how weird that thing is. Just rode Monster Mansion, and something I noticed about that ride, the layout was the exact same as the old Scooby-Doo ride that Six Flags St. Louis used to have. I was like, wait a second, this layout feels familiar, and sure enough, it was the same, so that's pretty interesting. Now that I made my way towards the front of the park, I'm gonna get a ride or two on Goliath since I'm right here, and I haven't been on this since 2021. I am very intrigued to see if this remains one of my three favorite B&M hybrids, which I have it ranked third behind Mako at SeaWorld Orlando and Diamondback at Kings Island. I've been really excited to get back on this thing. So let's do front row and back row while we're here. See which row I like better and see how it holds up. <laughs> This is the best B&M Hyper. I personally do not agree, but I can kind of see where people are coming from when they say this is the best one. I have it ranked third still behind Mako and Diamondback. The airtime on the finale is definitely not ejector, at least in the front, which is where I wrote it. It was more like low ejector, but definitely not strong ejector, so I don't know. I need to try the back row, which is what I'm gonna do now. I've actually never ridden the back row on Goliath. I've only ridden it in the front row. As of now, it's still my second favorite ride in the park after Twisted Cyclone, which that's a powerhouse of an RMC, and it's pretty hard to beat for this park. Once I try the back row, I'll see if that's better, but as of now, I think it's third best being in my for me. my third favorite B&M Hyper, so I do think the airtime strength is overhyped. I would not say it's ejector by any means. I would say it's flow ejector, and in the first half, it's definitely floater. I don't know why everybody says there's ejector on this ride, because it's clearly not, so I think Goliath is overrated and not the best right here, but I can somewhat see where people are coming from. Since I did actually get some airtime on this thing in the back, I can now say Raging Bull has the worst first drop on any B&M Hyper, because now I've ridden every US B&M Hyper in the front and the back, so there's that. Now I think I'm going to go try Daredevil Dive, because I haven't done that one yet.
yet. I was down for a little while. I think it's back up now, so let's go try Daredevil Dive Out. downtime this thing just went down for some odd reason i mean there's a train stuck right here so i don't know if that's what's going on but i guess it's off to kid flash let's get those two credits <laughs> unfair disadvantage because the ride started the operator must have accidentally pressed the stop button or whatnot and the red side happened to be part of the way out the lift hill so that was unfair and we lost the race by a long shot because of it so i call unfair disadvantage i'll try the red side in a little bit but now let's take a ride on mindbender and then go ride batman because i want to see how the back row on their batman clone holds up because i've been trying to ride all the other batman clones i've done besides the one at my home park in the front row in the back row and uh jeez looks like the line's pretty long for this one so hopefully it moves quick but they got one train running so this might not take too short of a time I guess <laughs>
ride on Mindbender and that was honestly the roughest ride of the whole day despite most of the ride being smooth. The reason why I said it was the roughest ride of the day is because there is one pothole that was right in the middle of that helix. One pothole that had such a bad jolt to it and it really needs some help in that section. I hope the car can figure out a way to make that part of the ride smoother. And then I got the red side of Kid Flash done so I have both sides of that now. It is Batman time and I'm so excited to try this one out again. This is still my favorite Batman clone even after riding the one St. Louis on numerous occasions since then, along with getting on the three in Texas over the past month. I'm gonna try the front row and the back row to see how they both compare to each other. Just got off of the front row on Batman. While that was intense, I thought last year was a bit more intense, honestly. I don't know what it was about it this time, but my single ride last year hit a lot harder. Maybe the front isn't the best row for this particular Batman clone. So I'm gonna go try the back row and see if it's better, but that was still really intense, don't get me wrong, but I've seen this ride run better than that before. <laughs> Just rode the back row on this thing. That felt like a train wreck. The whole train was bouncing all over the place the entire ride and it was not comfortable. So I do prefer the front row on Six Flags over George's Batman clone. It's sad that it was not running as intense as I remembered it being. Otherwise, it would a lot more. I have not done Twisted Cyclone yet, so I gotta go over there and get on that. And also maybe do Daredevil Dive as well. But the fact that I haven't ridden Twisted Cyclone yet, I need to change that. So let's head over there. There's hardly anybody in the station for Daredevil Dive, so now's the time to do that.
sub was all right. Maybe a little rougher than I remember, but it's still not bad. I would say it is better than Iron Shark at Galveston Pleasure Pier, which I wrote a little under a month ago as when I'm recording this. Finally, I'm getting a twisted cyclone. Since it has been running all day, I imagine this thing's gonna be flying. So I'm gonna ride the front row and the back row while I'm over here. It's funny, this will be the third RMC I've ridden on back-to-back -back days, because I'll have done Twisted Cyclone today, Air Force One yesterday, and then Iron Guaz the day before that. So that's funny, I've ridden three of the RMCs in the Southeast back to back to back. So let's see how this RMC still holds up. <laughs> Cyclone is still by far the best ride in the park. There is so much powerful airtime on this thing and it's relentless. Definitely a shorter ride, but I ain't complaining because what it does do with the layout it has, it's awesome.
try and get 30 rides on this thing today, and I'm at 15 right now. That means I have 15 more chances to try and break 700,000. It'll probably take me a few tries to re adjust everything, but I'll see how well I can do. Calling it a night with Justice League. It's when the line's spiking after the fireworks, which will launch right behind Superman, and my arm's getting really tired. There's no way I'll be able to get 30 rides on it and also get a night ride. So I think I'm gonna start making my way towards Goliath and get a night ride on that. We may have time to expecting it to be darker because Ryan told me that he got a night ride on it and there was no light back there so I was a little disappointed about that but definitely the best of the clear rides I had on today. I'll have to review my ride count and see what I did today and I will share that with you guys. Final ride count from today was 27 on Justice League which I think that's the record for the most amount of time I've ran anything within a day. Four on Kid Flash and I count each lap on Kid Flash as one ride because I went around twice and I rode both sides so I got four rides on it. Then I got three on Goliath, two on Batman and Twisted Cyclone and then one on every other coaster here with the exception of Joker Finance Coaster. So this is a really solid end of the trip. In terms of highlights from the trip, getting back on Mako, seeing how phenomenal that ride is, getting the ride Hulk again even though I had to battle for the soundtrack, it was still awesome. Getting my first experience with Revenge of the Mummy was great. Getting on Iron Gwazi, getting some more rides on that. Montu knocking my socks off with how intense it is. Getting some good rides on Air Force, even though the quad down killed me. And then getting back here to Six Flags over Georgia was also really, really fun. That concludes this Florida trip. And before you close out this video, please be sure to leave a like if you haven't done so already. Be sure to come away enjoy about this video and be sure to share it with someone else. Yeah. If you're new to this channel, like we saw, please consider subscribing to me for more content like this. My goal is to hit 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so I'd appreciate you subscribing and turn the bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. I also have an Instagram account for the pictures I take whenever I visit parks, so be sure to check me out there as well. In the link in the description. As for my next vlog, I should be getting back to my home park at Six Flags St. Louis fairly soon here, so stay tuned for that. Until then, I'll see you later.